Hello everybody and welcome to Easy Medicine. In today's video we are going to watch the third episode of Cells at Work. From the name Influencer I'm guessing that we are going to learn today how our body tackles virus infections. It's going to get a little bit more complicated than the previous two episodes so buckle your seatbelts and be ready to watch some Cells at Work. For those of you who are new, my name is Karsten, I'm a fourth year medical student and on this channel I'm explaining medicine in easy terms. If that sounds good to you, please consider subscribing. Currently 84% of you are not subscribed and I would be real thankful if we can grow this community together. So let's get straight into it. <sighs> <laughs> okay, from this back alley, I'm guessing we're right now in the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is kind of a drainage, just like they showed us. Um, your main way of distributing fluids is through the, your arteries and veins. But if something gets out of the arteries in the intercellular space, so the space in between the cells, like just like the back alley, houses being the cells, and in the back alley there's also fluid. This is the lymphatic system and this whole system is drained back right under your clavicle back into the venous system. Really interesting. Oh my. Okay, here we got the naive T cell, just like I predicted. Um, this cell has never encountered an antigen, so it has not transformed into a mature T cell. I guess this is going to be kind of the story of this episode, so let's wait a little till we explain this further. Okay, the migration is really important. If there is any kind of inflammation in your body, your arteries get leaky. So the cell space between the epithelial cells is widened. And by this widening, it's easier for cells to migrate out of the blood to the scene of inflammation. So all the white blood cells can get to the place of inflammation. Super, super nice. Uh, okay, here we go. Now we got the confirmation and now it's time to talk about viruses. Viruses are highly highly specialized parasites. They do not have the ability to translate their own genetic material into proteins. So they need the help of cells, of host cells. In kind of the influenza virus it's mostly mucus producing cells in your upper respiratory system. So nose, throat, this is the scene where these cells can invade other cells. The influenza virus there replicates and so more virus is produced and more tissue can be infected. <laughs> Not until he is mature. Don't get confused right now. Neutrophils are not taking a big part in infection with the virus. Neutrophils are really important in bacterial infections, but in kind of a virus infection, neutrophils are not of great use and you do not have the typical scene in the blood which is called neutrophilia. So overproduction of neutrophils. This is only seen in a bacterial infection. Oh yes. Okay, another big break is coming. <laughs> this is a really complex topic, so we need a few seconds to talk about this. Our body has antigen presenting cells, like the macrophage or the dendritic cells. Those cells can present foreign antigens and show it to other cells. Like, okay, I found this and 
this is this is odd this shouldn't be here look at this and if you find something like this destroy it now comes in place the naive t cell or the t helper cells they can go to the antigen presenting cells have a look and if their specific receptor fits those antigens they can start to proliferate and get mature let's see what's what's happening right now in this episode <clears throat> okay next big and important step in immunity once a naive T cell encounters its specific and I repeat highly specific antigen it separates into two different cells one is a T effector cell this cell actually goes and kills cells that are infected or presenting this antigen and the other cell is a memory cell just like this memory cells live for a long 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 time and once they encounter um, the antigen again they start to proliferate and produce more effector cells so memory cells are the exact reasons why vaccinations work and why if you get a disease once the next time you encounter this disease you are much better prepared this is the reason T cells and B cells form the adaptive immune system this adaptive immune system learns and grows as we continue to live and encounter more bacteria more viruses and more fungi <laughs> Ah, there's a dendritic cell, the antigen presenting cell. <laughs> what you just saw is the replication step. So inside the cell more and more virus particles accumulated and at one point the cell bursts, releases a lot more uh, virus particles that can now infect more cells. Influenza virus no zooshoku. Influenza virus wa taenai de wa 8 jikan go ni yak 100 ko. 1 nichi de 100 ko. This is the exponential growth of viruses. Very dangerous. Now our hypothalamus is kicking in. The body temperature is rising by this trying to fight the infection. Fever is kind of a double-edged sword. Viruses cannot cope so good with the higher temperature and our bodily cells can also not deal with it so good But a little bit better than the virus does so the virus is taking more damage and our immune system is acting a little bit faster That's why it's kind of good to not treat fever But if fever is getting too high above 40 41 42 degrees Celsius over a long time our own bodily proteins start to denaturate denaturation you can see it when you cook an egg if you put an egg into hot water it boils and the proteins denaturate irreversibly so you cannot return it and if you get now brain damage from too long too high fever you got irreversible brain damage so it's kind of a double-edged sword and we like to use some kind uh, some mild fever relievers like paracetamol for uh, treating fever what we're seeing right here is the end so the the limitation of our innate immune system so let's quickly look at all the different cells right here and our innate uh, immune system is compromised of the neutrophils the basophils the eosinophils 
the granulocytes are those whole group and the natural killer cells in combination with the macrophages and our T and B cells or lymphocytes are our adaptive immune system. This is much more powerful. <laughs> Guess who's back? Back again. T cells back with his friends. <laughs> yes, he is back. <laughs> and he's buffed. Moto, naive T Saibo. Effector T Saibo, Cassecastana. See, now he's coming back. He's not anymore nerve seal. He's differentiated into a factor T cell, which can now go and hunt those virus infected cells. <laughs> With his friends. Oh. <clears throat> so now we got our last player in the game, the B cells. B cells are just like naive T cells in the beginning. When they differentiate, they also form memory cells, so long term immunity is formed. And on the other cell, they differentiate into effector B cells, which are also called plasma cells. And these plasma cells now can produce antibodies. These antibodies bind to the specific anti genes. So what is happening right now is not like all kill those cells, but the T cells kill the cells that are infected. The B cells attack with their antibodies, the antigens of the viruses floating around and trying to infect new cells and to neutrophils cleaning up the waste of those apoptotic cells. So those cells are dying and everything of them is left. So this needs to be cleaned up, otherwise a severe inflammation would follow. It's not influenza. It's influenza, A, not B anymore. This is what I was talking about. Your adaptive immune system is highly specific. So they, those cells get not beaten up, of course, but if those receptors do not bind to the antigens, they wouldn't find those. So they don't realize that this is an, an infected cell. They wouldn't attack it. And so those antibodies and those receptors do not initiate any kind of attack against this cell. <laughs> oh, I love how they display this in the end and it's, it's just business as usual. The macrophage didn't panic and the dendritic cell neither. You just need now new T cells, new B cells, they need to get antigens presented and then they will kick influenza A instead of influenza B. This is uh, the episode already. I, I really enjoyed it. This was really good, but it is a really complex topic to explain in 20 minutes where other medical students are learning this for a whole year. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and that I explained in a kind of understanding way so you can now imagine how this whole fighting a virus works for our body and that you now know the difference between the innate and the adaptive immune system. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.